here's the question I want to ask you today. So whether you're driving down the road and you're on with us right now, or you're at the gym, or you're in the office, you're about to jump on with a potential customer, or you're just, I don't know, you're just doing whatever. You're just screwing around watching Netflix and you're on here. Here's my question I want you to think about. Why is it that the top 3% of salespeople in really any profession typically will make 80 to 90% of the sales and they make 80 to 90% of the money? Why is that? Well, my next guest is gonna help answer why that is. So let me give you a small taste of this man's incredible background. I could go on for probably about 20 or 30 minutes, but we're going to try to condense it. So my guest today is one of the world's premier social selling thought leaders, consultants, and trainers. He was featured by Forbes as a top 25 social selling influencer in the world as one of the world's leading thought leaders in the social sales space. And let me tell you that, that is not easy to get because I know a lot of people that have courses on social selling that are nowhere close to being on that list. So well done for this gentleman. He was a global selling trainer with Hootsuite before founding Next Level Sales in 2014. He's been recognized for his contributions to sales by the Huffington Post, AA-ISP, Inside View, and more. He's a world-renowned public speaker and travels with GSMI as a featured industry expert speaking at Social Media Strategy Summit Worldwide, and also published his first book in 2014 called Sell a Marketing, a tweetable book on social selling. He's heavily involved in pioneering social media and higher education and currently acts as an adjunct professor of digital marketing at UBC's Sauter School of Business as well as Simon Fraser University. I believe UBC is probably in Canada. I'm going to guess there. He <laughs> continues to speak at conferences, ec executive retreats, and workshops to share his unique skill set. It's a very unique skill set with the world. You can read his work on some of the world's established and respected blogs such as Marketo, hope I'm pronouncing that right, Hootsuite, Social Media Today, Nimble, and B2B Community. So with that, please help me welcome to the show, Mr. Julio Viscovich. Julio, how are you? Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for having me. It's a true pleasure to be on and sales is something that's uh, dear and near to my heart because it's something that's uh, used to have a bad rap and uh, I'm here to, uh, to, <laughs> to try and fix that. So now, did I pronounce your name right? Did I pronounce I, your name right? You did. You did an excellent okay. job from a, an American to a Canadian. You, uh, you did it well. Well done. You know, my mom's, my mom, you know, we're from Arkansas. So she always makes fun of me like, hey, we're from Arkansas. We don't know how to pronounce names. So that's <laughs> always my fallback if I mispronounce a name. So, hey, I'm excited to have you on here today, and especially talking about social selling because it's a little bit different than mono to mono or one to one. There's some aspects that are the same, obviously, but I love talking with trainers that understand the game of how to use selling or how to use skill sets that work with human behavior, whereas mm -hmm. most training I see are still old school sell set, skill sets that work against human behavior. And that's not a place you want to be at if you're in sales. No. So I'm pumped to have you on here. So I want to dive right into your story and give our listeners a feel for your background and really how you arrived at this point. Like you weren't born out of your mother's womb with social selling skills. Like how did you learn those skills to be so great at persuasion and influence? Yeah, well, it's really interesting. My, my first ever sales job was actually uh, an outdoor uh, cigar salesman job at the time, okay. uh, believe it or not. So I was pounding the pavement, um, visiting stores and whatnot. And, you know, came to the conclusion that it wasn't the most uh, ethical thing to do. Um, to be in that industry, right? So I, I repivoted a little bit and uh, and went to school for marketing. And when I came back, I ended up being the sales and marketing uh, trainer here in Canada. So essentially, went around and started to teach people what solution selling was and how to okay. figure out, you know, what clients need and ask the right questions and determine right. on, you know, what solution was best for them. Sure. And then I quickly moved over to something much more complex, which was Hootsuite, which is a social media platform that almost 90% of the Fortune 500s are using and right. essentially allows them to log into one spot, access all of their social media. And I was tasked with being the global trainer there. And, okay. you know, we scaled 
up until, you know, in two years from, you know, 300 to a thousand people. Right. Um, so it was tremendous growth. So during that time, um, I started looking at, you know, all these traditional tactics, like, you know, reading the Zig Ziglar books and, you know, going through all of that stuff and be excited um, about what you sell and they're going to be excited somehow. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, you know, just be as excited as possible, lead the conversation, uh, you know, yeah. and I started to figure out that wasn't working at all. Sure. Um, and new things needed to be, you know, tested out, tried. Yeah. Um, and that's where it all started for me was trial and error and figuring out, well, how can I take what I know about human behavior yeah. and maybe tie in with some of the foundations of some of the old school sales strategies, yeah. take a little bit from them. Cause of course you need that foundation, but really tap into what's happening now with technology and the way that people want to be spoken to and sold to and et cetera. Sure. So yeah. that was sort of my journey to, yeah. you know, starting to create my own training program that helped yeah. uh, our team um, really get some big wins. Well, you, you hit it right on the head. You said something there that I picked up. Today's consumer doesn't want to be talked at and sold. They want to be asked and understood. And when yes. you understand that, when you come from as a sales professional and you start thinking like a buyer rather than thinking like a seller, you will have a complete paradigm shift of what selling actually is and what it can do for people and the problems it solves for people. And oh, by the way, if they don't purchase your solution, they're still gonna have those challenges and problems. So it's a whole different paradigm shift where instead of focusing on just making the sale on every call and like stuffing your solution down their throat, you're actually focused on whether there's a sale to actually be made in the first place. Can I actually help this person solve problems that they might not even know they have yet? And we'll get into that in a second. So, I, you know, and that's something that kind of leads me to my next question. In your thought process, your advice, how has the consumer changed in, let's say, the last 10, 20 years? And how has selling changed in that time frame? Uh, gee, it's tremendous. I mean, with yeah. technology now, um, and especially with the products that are out there, yeah. there's so much similarity between them. Mm -hmm. So it's almost not like you're selling the product anymore. It's mm -hmm. you're selling yourself as the salesperson. You're becoming... Yeah not the vendor anymore, but the trusted yeah. advisor in the situation, the person yeah. that they can lean on, that they can trust, that they can help yeah. get the promotion, that they can yeah. help, you know, pitch to their boss. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things with technology is that, and the forms of communication. I mean, the days of cold calling, yes, they still exist, but pounding the phone for right. hours and hours and hours and trying to get your hundred calls in right. um, is not effective anymore, right? Yeah. So some of the small things that we used to do um, that I picked up on was some of that human behavior, like triggering certain elements within somebody. So for example, before I would make a call, I would literally take three minutes, visit their profiles on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or wherever they were at. I would like their tweets, I would comment on their posts, and I would know that they would all have one of these fancy mobile phones sitting beside them, yeah. and it would trigger this notification and they would say, wow, Julio just liked your tweet. Julio who just like, yeah. yeah, who is that guy? And all of a sudden the phone rings and it's, it's me. And right. they're like, I was just thinking about you. What a coincidence, right? right. So um, buying's changed a lot in terms sure. of that regard. Technology is, is a yeah. big player now, um, yeah. obviously with LinkedIn and, and those yeah. types of aspects. Yeah. Um, they need to be used. Um, they have to be used. And, and, and I think a lot of salespeople might not understand, uh, depending on your age group, really, but, you know, even 20 plus years ago, you know, mm -hmm. selling was completely different because what was the bridge between the company and the consumer before really the internet started really getting out there, right? Or social media. The bridge was really the, the salesperson but that would bridge the company and the consumer together because without talking to a salesperson, because people back in those days expected to be educated because yeah. without talking to a salesperson, really the only way they could learn about the company or products was by a newspaper ad or the radio or the TV commercials. And so they relied on you, the salesperson to do that. But in, in our day and age uh, with the, the rise of social media, the, the power of the internet, um, that's completely changed. Like you said, I mean, you hit it right on the head. The, the consumer already knows all about your company. 
Yeah. They know about your products, your services. They know your pricing. They know who your competitors are. They know how long you've been in business. They know everything about you by simply doing a Google search on their smartphone. Yeah. And because of that newfound power, they will no longer be manipulated or pressured by pushy salespeople because they know they have many choices to choose the exact product or service you sell. They become commoditized. Just like you yeah. said, everything looks the same because it sounds the same in their ears when salespeople are talking to them. You don't want to be commoditized. You want to be, like you said, the trusted advisor, the trusted authority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go to G2 Crowd or Trustpilot or any of those sites, and I mean, you've learned as much as any salesperson could possibly educate you on, right? So that's, mm -hmm. that's not the name of the game anymore. Yeah, 100%. Well, and I wanted to ask you this, and, and I usually start off the show with this, I just forgot to ask, but can you share something unique about yourself that maybe a lot of people just don't know about you? Uh, yeah, well, certainly a unique fella for sure. Um, I found my way to sales in a very interesting pathway. Um, I first uh, left Canada when I uh, finished university. I spent two years in South Korea and traveling around Asia, okay. um, which was really, really beneficial for my culture, for understanding how to sell to yeah. people of different cultures, sure. understanding the differences, etc., um, came back to Canada, wasn't sure what I was going to do, did my MBA, uh, and then ended up going into sales. Mm -hmm. And from there on in, I, um, you know, I, I really loved teaching people. I love bringing out the best in people. Yeah. And from there on in, I went into higher education. So now I've been teaching for the past eight years, teaching professional selling classes, because yeah. I want the new generation of folks to come out and be exactly like us to understand the concepts that we're doing. So that's sort of my motivation now is to change sales from being let's for lack of a better word, a sleazy, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, occupation into something sure. that's honest, something that helps. Yeah. And, uh, and I think a lot of people didn't understand why I took that trajectory and why yeah. I took that path. And, um, that's probably something that, uh, you know, that I'd like sure. to let people know. And what, what specific steps did you take to really get great at selling? I mean, there's a lot of salespeople out in the world. One out of every nine people on planet earth is in sales, like some type of sales job. And everybody out there doesn't matter what you do is always trying to persuade, influence, or convince others. So really the whole world is in sales. If you look at it that way, how did you become so great at selling? Ah, uh, well, I realized that you have to drop your ego. Number one, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you make a big sale and you think that, uh, that you're the king of the world and that's not yeah. the case. You might've just got lucky that day. Sure. Um, sales is constantly evolving and you can read as many books as you want. You can go yeah. back and read those traditional, oh, I went through spin selling or I went sure. through, you know, with this type of approach, uh, I was trained by a $10,000 a day company. Um, yeah. you know, that's great. It's fantastic. Um, but by the way, every other Fortune 500 company got that same training. So yeah. you're speaking to people in the same language. Sound the same thing. Right? So for me, it was putting in my 10,000 hours. Malcolm Gladwell yeah. says to become an expert in something, you should put in about 10,000 hours to consider yeah. yourself that. So yeah. I disregarded that old school stuff. I took it as a foundation. Of sure. course I did. But then I started to really look at, okay, how do I imply or apply different things that I think need to be in sales, like empathy, yeah. like emotional yeah. intelligence, like yeah. building relationships quicker, um, like, yeah. like leveraging referrals, things that sure. people aren't doing these days. Yeah. And I think those are the types of things that led me to, uh, to become, you know, top yeah. of the class. Well, it's human psychology, right? Like if you yeah. look at the best therapist in the world, mm. they don't tell their patients what they're doing wrong, what they should do they ask certain questions that allow the patient to tell themselves what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. And that's how they persuade themselves. Mm. The same thing is true in selling. Selling is all about change. That's all selling is, is change, right? You're asking the right questions to help the prospect feel tension that they have to resolve, right? Because most prospects, when you first talk to them, I hate to tell everybody listening, don't even know they have a problem in the first place. Or maybe they don't know the depth of the problem or the yeah. root cause of the problem. Or maybe they don't understand they have this problem, but they don't know how bad it could be, get 
the consequences if they don't do anything about it. That's yep. your job as a salesperson to help them feel that tension from those problems or potential problems. And you can only do that by asking the right questions at the right time to bring out that emotion and to really listen to the answers and let them listen to that. And you're more of a, facil a facilitator taking them on that journey where they're basically closing themselves. And that's when selling gets really, really easy because you're solving problems and you make yeah. a lot more money. You don't have to beat your head against the wall every day. <laughs> You're so right. You're so right. And I've always said, like, as today's salesperson, you should be listening 80% of the time and talking 20% of the time. And those 20% of the time should be asking. It should be dig digging into those questions to find that root cause, you know? 100%. Because not only do you find the root cause, but more importantly, who finds out the root cause? They find out the root cause they and do. that's they what you need to do is bring that out in them because unless it's a partnership, unless they come to yeah. the conclusion that that is their problem, it's yeah. not their problem. Yeah. Yeah. And you own the problem as a salesperson, whereas you have to get them to own their own problem because when they own their own problem, it becomes urgent to solve it now, not three or six months or a year down the road. Yeah. Now that, that leads me to the next question. What are your thoughts on using scripts? and feature benefit approaches to winning sale. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, uh, I can think, I think you tell by my, my chuckle there that, uh, right. you know, there's a lot of, of firms that are still doing that and it's, yeah. they're so far behind the eight ball, right? Because yeah. every sale is unique. Every person is unique. And when you come at things like scripts or features and sale, uh, features and benefits, um, you're setting yourself up for success right away because the minute you mention a feature or a benefit that doesn't erect, directly apply to that individual, sure. you've lost them. They've it's, already it, put when you're at the other. Yeah. yeah, they're psychologically already saying this person is offering me something I don't need. Yeah, um, a script doesn't fit. Right. I always point back to you know you come into a car dealership, you have 15 minutes with someone, and they want a car. And you just start at the mopeds and you start working your way all the way up to the diesel trucks at the end. And by the time you're done, they've got to go back home when you could have just sit there and said, okay, tell me just a couple things. What are you going to use your car for? Is it going to be for work? Is it going to be on gravel? Is it going to sure. be, you know, yeah. and then you could have walked them directly to the product they needed and, yeah. you know, began your conversation. So, you know, well, following that script routine, it's just yeah. old school. And yeah. I mean, I just, I, I can't even yeah. hang, I can't even stay on the phone when I get a call like that. Yeah, it is. Cause it sounds robotic, right? Like a telemarketer, yeah. like, you know, we do like a, a lot of our clients like Google AdWords is one of our largest clients. We train for their divisions and they had scripts, which is fine, but they're just yeah. talking, talking about features and benefits and talking and, and they weren't really getting that where, even though they have major brand awareness, right? Because they thought they yeah. were just Google. So we went and wrote out a sales structure. I don't like to call it scripted, like sales structure. Mm. You're going to ask these type of questions. They're connecting questions. Here's some examples. You're going to ask these type of questions next, situation questions to find out their present situation. Here's some examples. Yep. And they followed that structure, right? And we teach them to really memorize those questions because it's almost like an, you're an actor in Hollywood right? Yeah. Like your favorite movie, let's say you love George Clooney, right? You watch him on, on, in the movie and you don't think of him as George Clooney. You think of him as the character he's playing, even though every word out of his mouth is a hundred percent scripted. But yeah. It doesn't sound scripted, right? It sounds natural. Selling yeah. is about having a natural conversation, asking the right questions at the right time that lead you and them to find out what problems they have, the root causes, and whether or not you can help them. That's really what selling is boiled down. So I agree with you 100% on what you just said there. Mm. How has technology changed traditional selling? You touched upon it briefly, but I want to go back to that. How has technology in our day really changed traditional selling? Yeah, I think there's just more tools at our disposal now, right, as salespeople. Um, and that's something we didn't have before. Yes, it changed from the buyer's perspective, but it's changed from the salesperson's perspective. Mm -hmm. We know the buyer knows everything now because they have access to all that information, which puts yeah. so much more onus on the salesperson to be honest, transparent, and knowledgeable. It's made salespeople become product experts, industry experts, and competitor experts because you can't BS anybody anymore. They already know, they've found it, they've spoken to other people. 
Um, but it's also given salespeople a ton of different tools at their disposal, whether it's email trackers, whether it's the use of social media, right? Um, so there's a number of tools along with some of this new skill sets mm -hmm. that make the modern salesperson um, more powerful. Well, you do. You, you have to learn. And, and it's, sometimes it's hard. I, I know in my sales career, uh, you know, when, when I had my career, sometimes as new technology came on, I'm like, oh, I don't want to mess with it, you know. But sometimes it's just needed. There's some that really aren't needed that, that people go too much into the weeds with. But there's yeah. some tools that really can help you increase your selling even without talking to somebody. So there's different things out there. I agree with you 100%. Um, yeah. Let's talk about LinkedIn for a second because I know you really are big into that. It seems to be the social network choice for sellers. How can salespeople use it effectively though as part of their sales process? Because I'm assuming people get messaged all the time, every day from a salesperson. What can they do different to stand out? Yeah, see, that's the thing. The biggest mistake is sending a scripted, in mail to somebody that you're sending to a hundred other people. I mean, it's the same as an email blast and I would never ever suggest that. But LinkedIn, it's interesting because it's a wealth of information about somebody. So before a call and I, and I've kind of, I'm not sure if I've coined this term or not, but I call it the warm call. So if you're going to call on somebody, go to their LinkedIn profile at the very least, and find three or four things that draw some type of connection between you and them. So whether you went to the same school, who did you know? Uh, did you volunteer for the same organization? Um, yeah. Do you follow some of the same pages, um, et cetera? And we all know that in order to get a salesperson and a prospect to open up and get that trust, there has to be that barrier that gets broken. And if sure. you go directly into a sales pitch, it doesn't really work, yeah. right? So for me, LinkedIn is a way to actually break that barrier down, to have those three things ready to immediately put the buyer at ease and have that conversation. And that's when yeah. tensions go down sure. and we can actually have a trustworthy business conversation. So you, you, you go and like a few things. What do you do after that? Like, what do you, what do you, is there a message you send or how do you do that? You like some things, they notice you. What's your next step there? Yeah, I mean, there's so many different things. So one is just looking at their profile and finding out more about them so that you can speak to them so that yeah. you can drop that barrier. The mm -hmm. second part, liking a few things, et cetera, um, so that they see you on your phone and they get familiar with you as you know through notifications so You're starting to build some familiarity and yes always connect with them And like I say use those three things that you found in their profile to build that Connection request never submit or send that standardized connection like hi. I'm Julio. I'd love to connect with you right. always put why you're gonna connect with them what value you have and if possible put somebody that you both have in common because oh, referral selling or referral based sort of communications has yeah. such a higher impact on things and yeah. they're going to accept your call if they know somebody that you have in common. So yeah. there you go. I've set up tremendous amount of my calls through LinkedIn instead of just cold calling. And I found it's gone so much better that way. So LinkedIn, that's how I use it. I'm rare on in mails. I think they're scripted emails. Sure. I think there's so much else you can do with it from leveraging uh, what we just mentioned. I agree hundred percent. Are there any other social networks outside of LinkedIn that can be used as a sales tool for sales professionals? I know that's a big question we get from sales professionals, business owners. What are other tools? What would you suggest? Yeah, and it all depends on your business. I mean, we've been sort of skewing towards B2B in this, in this conversation, but in sure. B2C, it works as well. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. So a tactic uh, that is very well or not known very well is you can export your LinkedIn um, contacts into a list. Mm -hmm. And do you, you know, I'm going to bet you about 75% of them use that same email as they do on Facebook. So what was interesting that I found is I uploaded that list as a custom audience in Facebook yeah. and was able to create an ad that served to all of my LinkedIn connections directly on Facebook. So I was wow. reaching them on Facebook. I was reaching them on LinkedIn and it was tremendous. And 
One other thing I'll mention is Twitter. Twitter is uh, one of the one networks that's fully public. Like you don't have to like somebody or follow them to see what they're saying. So you can build lists of your competitors. When someone's unhappy with your competitors, you can jump in. Um, I was at uh, Chicago delivering a conference and they asked me, why should we be using Twitter? Right. And this was, I believe, the Fairmont Hotel. And I said, you know what, just let me bring up Twitter for a second. And I wrote, need hotel Chicago question mark. And just a load of things came up where it was like, stuck at O'Hare Airport, need a hotel. I'm like, reach out right now and send a shuttle to that guy and get that guy in here right away. So Twitter is great for monitoring, for listening, for understanding if someone's unhappy with your competitors because they'll be talking to them great time to reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, give us a shot. Um, you know, we can do a better job. So that's really remarkable. No, it's, it's so true. And it's, it's, I think a lot of times salespeople, especially if they're maybe a little bit older, like me, uh, we get worried, we get scared about technology and are we doing it right or whatever. It just takes a little bit of learning, right? You know, like if somebody wants to learn how to change oil in their car, well, you just go to YouTube now somebody's going to be talking yeah. about it, you know? So it's like we live in the days of information. It's the information age. You can learn anything you want, which is crazy to even think about even 20 or 30 years ago, you know, when we were like yep. little little kids, you know? Um, <laughs> if people want to take your advice and adopt these, you know, more modern approaches, especially with social selling, how can they find you uh, for help so they can increase sales? Like, how do they learn more about you? I want them to really get into this. Like social selling is massive. Like we're starting to do this uh, in my company now with Facebook groups and different things that we're doing. And it's, it's been tremendous. We've, we started this even with the pandemic. You know, we had to tr- transition real quick to more virtual and online and social media and Facebook groups have been great. Um, where can they learn more about you to, to adapt some of these new techniques so they can learn how to sell more through social selling? Yeah, I mean, people have changed. Technology's here. I mean, 80% of folks in the U.S. have a smartphone and they have connections to, uh, to social networks. So, I mean, there's a new avenue there to connect with people 24-7. So, it's a part of life now and it's got to be a part of selling. So, um, to learn more about what I teach, what I look at, what I go over, um, of course, I'm on LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash IN slash social selling. Um, I have my website, which is julio biscovichcom okay. And I have a tremendous plethora of free videos on LinkedIn, on social selling, on YouTube as well. So just type okay. in my name on YouTube. You'll find a ton of resources that will lead you back to my website, my profiles, okay. etc. cetera. Can you give us your website again? Because I want them to really go to your website today, start checking it out. They really need social selling help. Can you give me that website again? Yeah, it's, it's julio Biscovich. So J-U-L-I-O dash V-I-S-K-O V-I-C-H dot com. Perfect. Yeah, and we'll provide a link for everybody on here. If you're driving down the road, don't worry about it. Don't spill your coffee in your pants trying to get to a <laughs> pen. We'll provide a link. Um, julio, uh, it was amazing having you on. But I got one more question for you, and I know we're almost out of time. Can you give our listeners maybe one skill or a mind, one something to do with their mindset or an action step they can implement, like when they get off today, to start getting better results? Yeah, I think it's it's empathy and emotional IQ, and trying to improve those. Put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Um, understand what's going to get them promoted, understand what their metrics are, what they're being measured by. And that's going to go such a long way into really understanding how you can help them because that's what we are. We're helpers. We're solution providers. We're, you know, relationship builders. We're not sellers. Um, We're trying to help our prospects get hired, get promoted, um, solve a problem. So if it's anything, it's, it's start working on being more empathetic, um, you know, going through emotional IQ exercises, mm-hmm. um, reading 10K reports before yeah. you get on the phone with somebody so that you really understand what the company's problems are and how they can solve that issue for sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think those are the things that are going to create a partnership between you and the buyer, uh, you and the buyer, between the seller and the buyer. 
and you're going to accelerate from just some vendor who's reading a script into someone who's a trusted advisor. Yeah. And that's when the magic happens. And very few yeah. salespeople do that. They very rarely make that jump. Yeah. And those are the skill sets and the mindsets that you need to use to position yourself sure. as that type of advisor. So, yeah. you know, human behavior is key. Understand it. Develop your skills in those areas. Seek mentors if you have to that are doing it the right way. Yeah. And, you know, be, focus on yourself. Those old school sales books aren't teaching you these things. Take sure. it upon yourself. Yeah. And, and learn these skills and you're going to become one of the top 1%. I agree. I, and I think, I think those old school books are great for motivation, but it really ends there. But, but yeah. the thing is like, you know, it sounds good to be motivated and pumped up before every call, but the moment that prospect answers the phone or they say hello, it doesn't matter how much you've been pumped up or motivated. What matters is exactly the words out of your mouth or more importantly, the questions you're asking that cause that person to want to engage with you. Yeah. So none of that motivation matters if you don't know what to say or more importantly ask right when they answer and through that conversation that make them feel that you're there to help them rather than them feeling you're just there to sell them. It's a whole different ballgame at that point. That, that barrier is up at the minute they answer the phone and you got to drop that barrier as quick as possible. 100%. Yeah. Julio, that was a great interview. Thanks for being on. Uh, we're going to post that uh, here so everybody can jump into your training and learn how to be social sellers. It is something that is highly needed in the sales profession today. So thank you for being on the show, my friend. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It was a true pleasure and uh, hopefully we can do it again sometime. Now, if you're serious about joining the top 1%, I mean the top 1%, and you want to experience more training content just like this, Click the links right over there. Right over there, they're exactly what you need to see next. You see, I release new episodes featuring top salespeople and sales authorities, multiple six-figure, high six-figure, even seven-figure earners. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button right below, right below, and join our new Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You see, it's free, and there's a link in the description below just for you. We put it there for you. Finally, I make posts on Facebook and Instagram each and every day with more tips and training, so be sure and follow me and turn on your notifications. So make a comment in the first seven minutes to any of my latest posts, share this episode, and there's a very real chance that you're gonna win some killer prizes. And here's the thing, don't sit on the sidelines. Don't be like everyone else, get into the game. Join the sales revolution, stay active, get involved, learn the right skills, and we will show you how to take your life and income to a level that most only dream about.